check the description for information about my appearance on Lucy Lumen's podcast adventure. I'm going to test this with my very professional backdrop. The Bucky's chair was planned, by the way. I totally intended to do this just as I planned. Imagine you're at a photo shoot. You just got in your groove, got a hustle blood, and you're firing away. But then you have to reload. And then you get back on track and you have to reload again. What if there were only a way that you could just keep shooting? That way it used to exist, and maybe it could again. It's 220 film, and bringing it back is the best bad idea in film photography. Thank you to Megan for putting up with my overly dramatic intro idea. See the rest of our shoot later in the video. Like this handy page on the Dark Rooms website will tell you, 220 film was launched in 1965. Once a medium format staple, 220 film is basically double the length of 120 film with the paper taped to both sides instead of acting as a backing paper. This allowed double the shots to be taken in comparison to 120 film. In cameras like the Hasselblad that shoot 6x6, cm negatives, you could take 24 frames per roll. In 645 cameras, you could get up to 30 something roll per roll, which is almost 35 millimeter. Like even in beasts like the Mamiya RZ67 and the Pentax 6x7, you can knock out 20 frames per roll in 220. The ability to shoot more while spending less time reloading made 220 film popular among wedding photographers, fashion photographers, and other commercial photographers. Just about any medium format camera had some kind of 220 option available, many of which you can still find today. Unfortunately, when Fujifilm pulled the last of their 220 stocks around 2018, big surprise, 220 film was essentially wiped out. However, it's not completely gone, you just have to know where to look. We'll talk about that in a minute. They say film slows you down, and it's mostly true. I've heard so many people talking about struggling to finish 36 shot on a roll of 35mm. That's not usually my problem. So it was a delight when Marina sent me a few rolls of 220 film recently. This one I'm going to have to make a special note is from Marina, who is actually from Ukraine, and she's living in Seattle right now, so thankfully she's out of danger, but she has a lot of loved ones who are not. You should definitely check out Marina's channel, Analog Diaries, with the European spelling, and also go to her website and buy prints, because all the proceeds from the prints on her website will be donated to causes related to the Ukrainian crisis. Thank you. Shot number one. So obviously, you have to have something to photograph if you're going to use 220 film. And for me, that's usually a portrait. I'm setting up here with Ashley, uh, and this idea seemed better on paper. But the moral of the story is next time I should probably just go ahead and bring the backdrop stand. Anyway, I think this worked out okay, and it gave me some creative challenges that we'll address as we go. First, I had to do something to semi-clear out the background. I'm proud of my work here. <laughs> There, that works a little bit better. Before we get to the shoot, let's backtrack a little bit. I like it so much and it's so great. Why did 220 film go away? Extremely poor demand was cited when Kodak and Fuji pulled their 220 lineups. When wedding photography, especially fully embraced digital, I could see that being a major hit. However, I have to point out that kind of all film had extremely poor demand at the time. See, I like how you can kind of do more run and gun with this. Yeah. Also frequently cited are manufacturing cost and the fact that it did cost more to buy one roll of 220 film than it did 220 film. But apparently it's not completely impossible because I got this roll of Shanghai GP3 220 this year for less than $20. I can't tell if it's fresh backing paper, but they clearly have the ability to make this stuff. Now, doing anything in black and white tends to be cheaper than doing color, but companies that get master rolls like Cinestill or Lomography might, you know, consider the possibilities that they could do this. And yes, film manufacturers must always consider the cost of running one film versus another. Actually, this takes just like 45 seconds to get a feeling for what it's like to get into the groove with 220 film. That's 
a little bit less, a little more toward me. Okay, that's good. Oh, yeah, this will be fun. Okay. Cool. I'm not saying these are special shots or anything, but I think they turned out pretty well. It was nice to get a medium format camera with a square frame and a nice big viewfinder like you get from a Hasselblad and be able to get into a groove shooting more quickly without having to think a little more than usual about running out of film and reloading. This amounts to a simple pleasure, but it's a pretty nice one. So at this point you might be asking, how can I get 220 film in 2022? a lot of twos right there and there are a few options so before we go too far into this shoot with Megan I will tell you that you can buy the so far currently produced Shanghai GP3 220 film on their store which you can follow the link here if you want to put up a shipping which isn't too terrible to uh, the United States at least and then there's the option like having a friend with a supply of expired 220 film who will happily trade you for other expired film. And this is how Marina's Exachrome E100GX looks really wonderful. Although there's plenty more I want you to see from this film stock. Which brings us also beyond maybe friends with cool film, which brings us to the eBay and Etsy type places for expired film, which I think honestly are excruciatingly overpriced now. But not all hope is lost because if you watch enough on places especially like eBay, Craigslist, Friends, and Depop actually, you can occasionally catch really good deals. However, you don't know the quality of the film, so it's always a crap shot unless somehow somebody knows it's been cold the whole time. Oh, last shot. So I guess honestly I couldn't say that I think you should go out and buy 220 film unless you happen to have a back or have a camera that has a 220 setting. And if you do, that's cool, I, th I say take the risk. Degraded film can have its own look, even though I don't think the look is worth, you know, the same cost as new film. Before we move on, I'd like to say that I really enjoyed how this simple setup worked, especially with how nice this film looks despite being old. But even with this good outcome, it sounds kind of like I'm saying bringing back 220 film is a bad idea. That's why I say it's the best bad idea in film photography. The film shooter of 2018 only really bears a loose resemblance to the film shooter of 2022. As far as Kodak goes, inflation is hitting them hard, supply chain issues are hitting them hard, but the demand is way up and they know it. I, I feel like we should also take note that the other reason that film prices are going up it's because they're trying to restructure their entire existence to fit the new smaller but very dedicated film market. At the moment, it's not cost effective for Kodak to pursue 220 film. However, the thing that could change their mind is if we start demanding it and we start buying enough film that they believe they could actually make money and justify retooling machines or bringing things back out or whatever. Again, that all depends on us letting them know what we want, not with just words, but also with money. But here are the shots I like most that I got with Marina's film so far. As you can see, these early ones turned out great. I was using a ring flash and it was nice and simple until I backed the lens out a little too far and then I started kind of blasting the corners of the frame with it and I didn't realize it. So there's some heavy flaring, which you can see here, but my not so secret is that I just photoshopped them. I mean, we're living in 2022. We can use a little Photoshop on our film photos too. That doesn't mean I negated the whole reason for shooting film. I love the field of view. I love the detail. I love the nature of the grain. I like relying on the science. Yeah, there's plenty left to love about film, even if you, you know, maybe indulge in some digital tactics occasionally. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to subscribe turn on notifications, like it, comment, and so on. If you enjoyed it a lot, feel free to join my Patreon, and I'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Also, feel free to enjoy one of these other videos.